Today, I'm sitting down with my friend and ballet teacher, David Coleman. He has a dance performance and education degree from the University of Alabama in Birmingham. He teaches ballet to adults as well as ballet partnering in the area in Georgia and um, in Alabama as well. So today, we're going to do a couple of questions to see David's perspective on ballet in general and specifically on adult ballet. Hey David, how are you? I'm fine, Natasha. Thanks, you for, thanks for inviting me. Well, of course. So let's, uh, let's get started. So tell me a little bit about how did you get started in ballet? Well, I started both ballet and competitive gymnastics at seven years old in Auburn, Alabama. I did that pretty much most of my childhood in both the, the ballet and the competitive gymnastics. Both disciplines were able to feed off of each other. As I grew older, I uh, leaned more to the classical ballet side and in my high school years, got more serious about classical ballet technique. The reason that I started probably in the very first place was uh, I was recruited at seven years old to be one of the children in the local performance of the Nutcracker. So were you a little mouse or which one were you? I was just a, a party guest. Oh, you were Just a, a child of uh, some of the party guests okay. in the first act. All right, so and then you fell in love with it from there. That first real loud applaud that you hear when you're on stage, there's, there's you, something, <laughs> yes, there's something that can happens. Can never get it now. Right, just like you, then you want more of it. <laughs> That's awesome. So tell me, David, what do you think makes ballet so special and so different from all other types of dance? That's an excellent question. Every dance style that's out there has its own special technique, its own special flair, its own special flavor. Um, I think that, you know, ballet is set apart from a lot of those styles in that in classical ballet, there's no age limit. That's such a fresh perspective. Tell me more about it. Well, to give a good example, one of my ballet mentors, uh, the former department head of the dance department at the University of Alabama at Birmingham, his name is Stefan Grebel, and he still teaches and has his own school in Birmingham. He just turned 84 years old, mm. and he still plays parts in his own ballets, whether it is... Uh, playing Drosselmeyer for the Nutcracker. And I saw him when you, you performed with him in Coppelia. He was amazing. Exactly, that is correct. He played Dr. Coppelius. Yes, yeah, so he was great. Mm -hmm. So that's, a, yes, that's a very interesting perspective that you bring. Thanks for mentioning it because the general public has this idea that ballet is something that little girls do once a week after school, the day they don't do something else and that's it. And once they become teens, that's it, no ballet is no more. And you know, what you said is so true and I hope that it shows people that yes, you can be involved in the ballet at any age. That's a very good point to bring up. Um, here in America, I think that what you said is exactly true. People don't exactly relate to the idea of adults having a lifestyle of ballet. And it is exactly that. It's not a hobby, it's a style of life. In many countries, of course, the country you're from, yes, they're country. very proud of their national ballet. And That's Russia, by the way. Russia. <laughs> and 
you know, it's a, a very well-known thing that, that the companies there are very large, uh, very serious about what they do. And... Now, let me mm -hmm. ask you this. You said, and I, I will agree with you, but I just want to explain a little bit for our viewers. Mm -hmm. You said ballet is a lifestyle, it's not a hobby. Now, many adults these days, or students, mm -hmm. uh, are taking out ballet, and I don't know if just tell me what you think of this. I feel like when you start, it just starts as like, oh, I'm just gonna try this, just like you might try Zumba or whatever. And then you either gravitate away from it or you fall in love with it. And then it's like a little bit more than a hobby. Even if it's not gonna be your job, it becomes something where you are gonna be dedicated to going to class every week and you're gonna buy the things that you need for class and you're gonna learn ballet history. So. It kind of just becomes a very a hobby that takes over things. What do you think? I'm really glad that you brought that up. I think both you and I, of course, are running our own adult ballet programs currently. Mm -hmm. And I think for a lot of adults that have either never tried ballet but have always wanted to, or maybe they were a ballet dancer when they were younger, mm -hmm. and that could have been one or two decades ago. And or three. Or three, and they're a little bit nervous about getting back into it. Maybe for them, that's something in between a uh, hobby and a lifestyle. I think it you know, could definitely be described as a new discipline in their life. And we all, whatever background we're from, need something, some kind of discipline, and especially something that we can call our own. And I think for a lot of people, it can be ballet classes and maybe even the opportunity for performances. Yes. Okay. So David, tell me about something that I learned, learning partnering with you, and it's the importance of trust. Tell me about that. How does that play a role? That's a very good question. In ballet partnering, more commonly known as pas de deux, step for two in, in French. In French. Mm -hmm. um, it is a literally a 50-50 joint effort between mm -hmm. the man and the woman. The woman's job is to be able to, for example, hold a certain position in the air when the man's lifting her. The man's job, number one job, that I always tell any guy in a partnering class, first rule, do not drop the girl. <laughs> yes. And, you know, it's an ongoing joke, uh, you know, with a lot of my students. I say, would you rather be dropped or would you rather have bruises on your side because he's holding you tight enough? They all say, bruises. I'd rather have yes. fingerprint bruises all over me than be dropped on mm -hmm. stage. So the man's job is to support the woman and present the ballerina. Make her look good. Make her look good in a pas de deux. Um, the audience generally sees more of the ballerina in the tutu than the guy behind her. But Unless it's Nureyev. Of course, and he's gonna <laughs> want some stage time, of course. I mean, like, he did like a whole ballet pretty much for himself. Right. <laughs> and, um, but really, uh, even though it's more about showing off the ballerina, it is a 50-50 effort between the two of them. And it takes a lot of trust, as you were saying, to be able to hold a ballerina above your head in a certain position, say in a fish position, and for her to have a very content look or a smile on her face, and for him to know that she's not going to wobble so that he can throw her, spin her in the air, and catch her in a fish as she comes down before hitting the floor. While that looking, takes a lot of trust. Looking like yeah. it's very easy and you're smiling and mm -hmm. then you look at each other and the effort is completely invisible if you're doing it right. And that's another good point that you just brought up, the looking at each other part. Partnering in ballet doesn't have to have a single pirouette, a turn. It doesn't have to have a single lift. It doesn't have to have a single dip. You can have an incredibly beautiful and professional pas de deux if the communication is there. Now, if you have a 
a pas de deux, let's say a five minute pas de deux, and the man and the woman never look at each other, there's no, there's no communication, physical or emotional, the audience isn't getting their money's worth. Yeah. They're paying to see two people who love dancing together. Thank you, that's, that's a really great answer. Um, how do you feel about, well, I know how you feel, but I'm gonna ask it anyway, because mm -hmm. uh, I want everybody to know about adult ballet, beginners and intermediate students, learning partnering. I know it's kind of a mm -hmm. rare opportunity that we have mm -hmm. you here and not every adult dancer group has this. So thank you for being here. But yeah, tell me a little bit how, how you see it. Well, how I see it and how I've also seen it uh, teaching partnering to adults, they're naturally going to be very nervous and very shy. And if it's something that, uh, you know, perhaps you would like me to work with your adults on, and I'd be happy to, they can be assured that I'm not going to come in on the first day and try to lift them and throw them around or anything. You always want to work on whatever is going to make them feel the most beautiful mm -hmm. and the most presentable. It's not about doing skills. It's about, as I said, communication. And that's very important to know because I think a lot of people think, you know, like I'm going to have a partnering workshop with you in the mm -hmm. coming months. And I just want people to know, like when you see that, don't think that this is for the super advanced dancer and that you have to do this like overhead lifts. It's just to teach you what you can learn at the level you are. Mm -hmm. is that, exactly. Is that correct? Exactly. And it's going to be very natural for anybody, and I think especially adults, to feel afraid and nervous about trying some kind of ballet partnering in the beginning. And then once they see how nice it is, how rewarding it is, mm -hmm. uh, I, you know, they usually are gonna wanna come back for more. And in my partnering classes, I always allow any of the students to bring in cameras they're welcome to take pictures of certain selfies, mm -hmm, selfies if they want, but um, Instagram it. Right, you know, they can take videos of some of the ballet combinations and show them off on uh, social media if they like. Uh, any pictures or videos would be fine. As long as they look good. Mm -hmm. And I can <laughs> promise you they will. <laughs> yes, and he's very good about setting us up for pictures and Emily, who is filming this, hi Emily. She, she's also sometimes, she does some photo shoots with us. She makes sure that the pictures that come out of you look good. So just let you know. Now I'm gonna switch this up a little bit and I'm gonna ask you a controversial question that I didn't even write down. So, okay. so David, I know that you are into classical partnering and that classical ballet is your main thing. Uh, how do you feel about more contemporary ballet and especially about same-sex pas de deux? Well, uh, that's a very good question. There are actually companies um, around the world. There are, there's, some in, uh, there's one in Japan I know of, there's uh, uh, one in New York, mm -hmm. and I'm sure there's a lot more than that, where literally you have um, the entire company is made up of, say, nothing but the same sex, nothing mm -hmm. but men, for instance. Like the Trocadero dancers? Exactly, yeah. Ballet yeah. Trocadero. And, um, and they're, they're not doing it to be jovial at all. They're literally doing it as a full-length mm -hmm. uh, classical story, classical ballet. And um, There's also a Swan Lake that was made, that is, I forgot who made it, but it's an all-male Swan Lake. Right. So, right, could have been probably the same company, mm -hmm. and the uh, the the corps de ballet would all be men. Mm -hmm. The um, the pas de deux would would of course be between you know uh, the same sex, but you know they do it uh, for artistic purposes, and of course um, uh, in the very early '90s, <clears throat> Mark Morris uh, did his own version of the Nutcracker. I believe it was called the hard nut, and I <laughs> and I hope that I don't misquote him. But I know that his um, 
when he did the snow scene, the court of ballet uh, were entirely made up of both men and women, when traditionally it's only women, but I believe what he said is that snowflakes have no gender. They're neither <laughs> male or female, so that there's certainly nothing wrong with you know. putting the men in the, in the snow costumes and, and being part of the core. Yes. So have you ever done anything like that or choreographed? Like a two girls or two guys part of two? To be honest, I haven't. I wouldn't be opposed to, okay. to trying it, but I, I have never done that. Goals. Teaching goals, right? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, David, as we talked a little bit before, especially down here in the South, not that many men are, are involved in classical ballet. And it's not just here, it's, it's in a lot of places, pretty much everywhere except for like New York City. There is this kind of prejudice <clears throat> against men that are involved in ballet. Um, a lot of boys that even enjoy it in school, then they quit because the other kids pick on them. So what would you say to a male, young or old, that wants to do ballet and feels like this general prejudice is holding them back? Right. And I don't know if it's necessarily just prejudice. I think it's sort of uh, fear of something that is different from the mainstream. Mm -hmm. and Fear of the unknown. Right, and as you had mentioned earlier, the general consensus is that ballet is for little girls to do an activity after school one day a week. Would you say that some, in, especially in the classical ballet stories, some parts are very actually masculine in the strength that is natural to the male is very evident? It is, and not only that, um, in most professional ballet classes, you actually have a difference in skills. You have the men's skills, you have mm -hmm. the women's skills, you have the men's combinations, you have the women's combinations traditionally on point shoes. Um, the, the combinations are different. And in the big classical ballets, traditionally, you're going to need the contrast between the men and the women. They're, they are doing slightly different things from each other. Yes, complementing each mm -hmm. other. Good, thank you. Uh, now let's just kind of switch tracks a little bit. Where I know that classical ballet, some people say that it's a dying art. I don't think so. I think it's an art that is being reborn. Where do you see ballet as an art and as a practice for the general public in the next 10 years? Well, ballet has been around for the better part of 200 years and it's, you know, been evolving since then. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's going to, the lifestyle of ballet the education in ballet is going to keep evolving for the better. I've noticed just maybe in the last 10 years more ballet on social media, more classical ballet uh, movies that are based on, on yes. classical ballet. I think that because of social media, people are able to get this out there and know that in fact it, it isn't a dying art. It's still very big in most areas of the world. And, uh, you know, and I think because of uh, more opportunities to, to get show it, it off. To, to show it off on social media, it can show smaller towns, uh, smaller areas that, in fact, it's, it's going just as strong as it ever has. I think so, too. Mm -hmm. And do you think that it's going to become more are more popular as a, you know, as a way for people to work out and have, you know, an after work activity that they're passionate about. Mm -hmm. I, I think that that has been growing a lot. That's why we're here mm -hmm. as teachers. Do you think it's going to keep increasing? I think so. And I think that, um, that, and I, I sincerely hope that we see more adult ballet programs popping up in different communities uh, 
you know, of course, as adults, we might not be able to jump as high, land as hard, leap as far, get as big of a split as we did. But again, it's not about how high, how fast you are. It's, it's more about the art form. It's more about the technique. It's more about the discipline. And... Because you can still always get better. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like as an adult, maybe, you know, your leg is all the way up to your ear, mm -hmm. but uh, you can still get your leg higher every month or every two months, a little bit higher. And that, that is like amazing as something that you receive mm -hmm. from the class and then you want to keep coming back. Exactly. And um, it will, of course, give you more strength and more flexibility. Now, an adult ballet workout, as we know, it's not a high impact aerobics class where you're all of a sudden going to get in shape in one month. It's not that. It could be seen maybe in the same discipline style as say yoga or tai chi, where over a period of time you get the benefits that you want. You get the flexibility, you get the strength in areas that most people don't have strength. Because mm -hmm. ballet definitely targets areas completely different that muscles. Ride different muscle groups. And uh, you'll definitely get those benefits over time. But ballet is something that you have to feel a lot of patience for. And yes. go into it for the art form first. Then you'll fall in love with it. Then you, well, some of us get addicted to yes. it. And we're it's gonna want more. It's mm -hmm. not turning back for mm -hmm. us. <laughs> so tell me, for you personally, as a ballet dancer and as a ballet teacher, what are your plans for the future? I know you were talking a little bit about doing workshops, maybe even outside the U.S. Tell me more about that. Right. I'm available uh, through my freelance business, which is myballetclass.com. And I'll put all of that in the notes. And I'm available for workshops pretty much anywhere, whether it's uh, uh, domestic or international. And I plan to continue the adult ballet program. And uh, although I'm certainly no spring chicken, uh, I still plan to be in whatever ballets are age appropriate for me. And um, I'll just continue doing that as long as I can. I think that's awesome. I think you and I are gonna be dancing for a long time until we die. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> hopefully together. Yes, yeah. definitely together. And I'm so glad, Natasha, that you have started the one and only adult ballet program in the Columbus, Georgia area. And with that, you and I can start networking together and maybe make it a much larger community. Yes, definitely. Um, there was no adult ballet program in Columbus, so I'm very happy to now be running the adult ballet program at Company C Academy of Dance which way I will also include for you guys to be able to find us. And definitely there will be collaborations coming, coming up between David and I. So David, before we conclude, can you tell our viewers where to find you on a regular basis teaching adult ballet as well as ballet partnering? Well, the adult ballet program that I have is in Auburn, Alabama, and the partnering classes that I teach, besides the workshops that I do, on a regular basis I teach at the Ballet Academy, which is located in Opelika, Alabama, and Alabama Youth Ballet, which is in Birmingham, Alabama. And I will also include all this in the show notes. Well, thank you, David, very much for um, coming to my channel and doing this interview. And guys, if you enjoyed this type of video, and if you have any questions for me or David, send me a comment, and of course, subscribe to the channel, give it a like, and share it with your friends. Thank you, see you next time.